Okay, let's go through a positive case so we can know what an acute pulmonary embolism looks like on CT. So this is a patient that is recently post-op, a younger patient that came into the ER complaining of shortness of breath. A CT pulmonary angiogram was requested and performed. And I can see here I'm at the level of the main pulmonary artery. You can see the right and left uh, pulmonary arteries. And let's go through step by step and see if we can start to exclude a clot. So I'm, I'm, so I'm excluded here a right or left main uh, pulmonary arterial clot. I'm going to start with the right upper lobe. I'm coming up here. I can see the right upper lobe segmental branches coming off. I want to make sure that I'm not looking at this. This is actually turns out to be a pulmonary vein because if I come back proximally, I can see that that's not continuous with here, which is the right pulmonary artery. So I'm going to keep scrolling up. I'm going to now look, widen my eye, look for any filling defects. I'm going to keep coming up. I'm looking up and I, I don't see any filling defects, so I've cleared the right upper lobe. I'm going to move on to the right middle lobe. I can see here the right middle lobe pulmonary artery coming off. I'm looking for it to come off in this region because that's the right middle lobe. I can see two branches, so I'm going to start following them and looking for any sort of uh, filling defect. And now something's catching my eye posteriorly. I'm seeing here in the right lower lobe, I'm seeing something catching my eye. So I'm actually going to scroll back and I'm going to come up to the right lower lobe here. This is actually the right lower lobe pulmonary artery here. This is the superior segment of the right lower lobe. Uh, superior segment tall arteries coming off. Those look clear, but if I keep scrolling down, I'm seeing here these filling defects. And if I keep coming down, I'm definitely seeing a large filling defect there. And if I keep scrolling on multiple images, that filling defect is persisting and it's basically branching along with the right lower lobe basilar segments because it's on the uh, basilar pulmonary artery because the superior segment was not involved. And if I come back up here, I can see that this is probably the first branch of the right lower lobe artery. It looks like it starts there and it basically extends for a great deal throughout the right lower lobe uh, basilar segments. Uh, this is a filling defect, most likely is a pulmonary embolism. So right there, I'm going to stop. I'm now going to try to confirm this finding. Um, this is very concerning for a pulmonary embolism. I'm going to go to a different plane in order to confirm that finding. Just switching windows over here. So again, widening the window. Just to orient you, this is the MIP that I was talking about. Each 2D image is now displaying one centimeter thick worth of tissue. Here's my right pulmonary artery. Here's my left pulmonary artery. Here's the branching of the right lower lobe pulmonary artery. And here I can see very nicely that filling defect. I can see how it seems to be affecting the right lower lobe. And I can see here, I can see just how that, that filling defect extends. So this is definitely a pulmonary embolus. So the pulmonary artery supplies the pulmonary parenchyma, so when that gets infarct, or basically gets occluded by a clot, you actually end up with an infarct. And sometimes that can result in an opacity in the lung. And you can see here, I'm at the basilar right lower lobe. This is the diaphragm, so if I come up, I know I'm in the right lung base. I'm seeing all this ground glass and hazy opacity involving the posterior aspect of the right lung base. Um, so basically the patient has a pulmonary infarct, or sometimes called a Hampton's hump, and that's an association to this uh, right lower lobe pulmonary uh, arterial uh, embolism. Other thing I want to look for is uh, if the clot is, is large, it could be uh, putting back pressure on the right ventricle and causing a right ventricular strain pattern. The way to look for that is to come down, uh, looking at the heart here, this is a section through the, this is the left ventricle here and the right ventricle here. This is the intraventricular septum. I basically want to look and see if the right ventricle is increased in pressure and basically bowing this septum from the right into the left ventricle. So basically bowing it in this direction here. And it looks like it's still kind of convex uh, from the left ventricle out into the right. So that's a normal relationship. So it doesn't have evidence of right ventricular strain, but in any case definitely has an acute pulmonary embolism this is definitely something you want to get on the phone to make sure the ER knows that he's got a pulmonary embolism with also a Hampton's hump or a small pulmonary infarction. He's going to need, on, need to go in anticoagulation. Just want to quickly show a slightly less obvious pulmonary embolism. This is another CTPA that was performed on a gentleman in the ER complaining of chest pain. As I scroll down to the uh, right lower lobe and right middle lobe pulmonary arterial segments, you can see here the middle lobe segments coming off. And they seem to be okay, but if I look posteriorly, this branch here must be the superior segment of the right lower lobe pulmonary artery. There is a filling defect there. There's a low density, low attenuation clot. It seems to extend on multiple images. I can see here in this cross section that it's branching and extending to fill this uh, uh, subsegmental branches of the superior segment of the right lower lobe pulmonary artery. If I keep coming down, this is now the basilar right lower lobe pulmonary artery. 
seems to be uninvolved, and I can see that as I keep coming down, uh, he does have some atelectasis or consolidation at the right lung base. If I scroll back up, I can see that that clot is really just involving the superior segment of the right lower lobe pulmonary artery, so that would qualify as a segmental pulmonary embolism. Uh, so now you've seen a pretty good-sized multi-segmental uh, pulmonary embolus, and now you've seen a segmental pulmonary embolism. Uh, the clinical utility or value of diagnosing subsegmental clots is currently under question, so I'd say this puts us in a pretty good position to diagnose uh, clinically significant clots. Uh, once again, I hope this video was helpful, and uh, by now you should be able to uh, go through a CT pulmonary angiogram, study systematically, and diagnose at least a segmental level pulmonary embolism. Thank you for your time.